And joining us now to talk about that looming shutdown and the Democrats' efforts to push President Biden's massive spending plan through, Indiana Senator Mike Braun. Senator, welcome to the program. Good to see you. Hey, good to be back on. Absolutely. All right. First question here. Again, a lot of spending we're talking about, but let's start with this one. Will we see the government shut down? I don't think so, because uh, all the balls that are up in the air being juggled here, that was almost confusing to listen to all the different variables in terms of Bernie Sanders, Kirsten Cinema, all of that. That'll work itself out. And when it comes to the government shutdown, they're going to try to use that as a lever to get us to roll on some things. And, you know, in my view, I've been here just under three years. The place was broken uh, before I got here in terms of no budgets. We haven't done them in 20 years uh, that we've adhered to. Both sides of the aisle have been guilty of bringing us to where we were pre-spending spree. So the government shutdown is interesting in the sense that in the past, uh, it's been divided government. You've kind of needed both sides to uh, weigh in on uh, lifting or suspending the debt ceiling and keeping the government financed through continuing resolutions. So the public understands these are CRs that we should have done nearly a year ago. These are CRs for the year that's about ready to expire in a day or so. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the insanity of this place in uh, the first place. And you're going to see, since Democrats have teed up this crazy spending, Republicans have now had an epiphany that we need to hold the line. I'm glad of that. Uh, they won't shut the government down. Then they own everything, yeah. including a bankruptcy spending plan and shutting the government down to boot. Yeah, Republicans really putting this all uh, on Democrats at this point. As we know, they control the White House, the House, and the Senate here. So now the question is whether or not they can come together. And we're hearing from different voices, including progressives like Congresswoman Jayapal, making it clear that her primary objective is passing that $3.5 trillion spending plan before the infrastructure bill. Uh, let's watch the Congresswoman, and then I'll get your thoughts. I don't think the speaker will bring the vote to the floor if she doesn't, the bill to the floor if she doesn't have the votes. And I think she is very clear that without the reconciliation bill voted on, um, you know, we are going to have, it can't be a pinky promise, right, Rachel? It's got to be an actual bill that is written, the legislative text is written, the numbers are agreed to, everything is agreed to. But is there going to be enough time? House Speaker's got the $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill up for a vote tomorrow. Will progressives have the vote to get that through? So, you know, I think that there's so many moving parts there, and progressives are going to take it on the chin here a little bit because you got to remember the $2 trillion we did through the rescue bill that's already been done with no Republican votes, this additional $4 trillion, that's above and beyond our normal spending of $4.5 trillion per year. I think that you're going to find that Pelosi will get something done. There would be ultimate egg on her face, and I think she'll have to then start chopping at the top line. And I wouldn't be surprised that uh, you have to pare it down to maybe $2 trillion, which is still half of what we normally spend in a given year. And as much as the progressives are saying, we got to do this, this has got to be first, she is a realist. Uh, she's going to get something through, and she'll start twisting arms to do it. It's just a question of when and how much you pare it down. And I think the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which I was against because these things were connected at the hip all along, mm -hmm. to me it enabled us to get where we are now, and I didn't like that because it didn't go through normal processes and budgeting and all that. That's kind of a moot point now. Something will come out of the House that Cinema and Mansion will agree to. I'd assign odds 60, 70 percent, maybe close to 80, as opposed to the whole thing falling apart. That would be a calamity for them. I don't think she'll let that happen. Okay, so it might end up being a little less than $3.5 trillion based on your predictions here. And yet we heard from Jen Psaki, uh, regardless of the price tag, whether it be 3.5 or a little under that, it's going to cost you zero. So that's not a problem, right? Your thoughts on, on how the White House is, is uh, really paring down this cost here. Again, not going to cost you a cent. 
they're better at us in terms of using Madison Avenue uh, kind of uh, bylines like it's not going to cost you anything. Mm -hmm. It's going to cost us in many ways. Inflation down the road already. Here they're referring to the fact that they say they're going to pay for it. They've laid out 11, 12 tax proposals. I do think that they'll end up getting the individual rate from 37 back up to 39.6. The corporate rate is going to go back from 21 to 25, 26, 5, 28, and maybe the capital gains rate being adjusted up. The rest of the stuff, you couldn't get all the Democrats interested in doing it. So we're going to borrow most of the money for whatever they end up doing, which that's not out of the ordinary. We've all been doing that for decades. Uh, but that's a false promise to the American public. They'll blame it on the Republicans for not raising revenues, and they know most of that wouldn't be uh, endorsed by many in their own party. A little bit of revenue, mostly borrowed money, to get their uh, liberal agenda across the finish line. It's just going to be interesting to see how it does stumble yeah. across the finish line when they had such grand plans as recently as a couple weeks ago. You know, we're talking in, in huge numbers here. It might not be fully relatable p to people, but when you're speaking to constituents in Indiana, those small business owners, what are you telling them uh, when they see these giant price tags and reconciliation spending bills? So it almost, uh, you got to remember, 08, 09, uh, a bigger crisis than what we've come through here because this was caused by government and bureaucrats, in my opinion, way overreacting to something that Main Street was handling pretty well, the COVID crisis. Uh, you got to tell people back home, don't internalize everything you see out here in D.C. and make you want to crawl in a hole, number one, and mm -hmm. that if you're in functional places like Indiana, uh, like Texas, where the productive economy is actually respected and you don't want to grow your favorite growth business, the federal government, like Democrats want to do, and many blue states adopt similar policies, uh, take solace in that. Yeah. We're going to pay some price for this across the board, but the biggest thing it ought to do is give us the opportunity. If we can't win with this material to work with, when you throw the southern border, Afghanistan into it, Republicans need to do some soul searching mm. on how to better articulate our own message. I think we got all kinds of opportunity to get back both chambers in 2022, yeah. win the presidency in 2024, then what do we do with it? Do we really try to reform this place or do we morph back into being right. part of the problem? Well, the midterms will be fascinating to watch indeed. Senator Mike Braun joining us live on the program. Senator, thank you very much. You're very Coming up.